Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Coffee with Craig, where we talk about all things firearms, firearms policy, culture, media, politics, you name it. We're talking about it right here on Coffee with Craig. So please take a moment, like, and share this program so that your friends can join in the conversation. Whether you're watching us on Facebook or on YouTube or you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts, on Apple iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, there are tons of different ways to get plugged in. So share it with your friends. Tell them about the Firearms Policy Coalition and about Coffee with Craig so that they can join in the conversation. Also, please make it a point to go to fpcgear.com, fpcgear.com. We have all, all sorts of cool T-shirts, hoodies, coffee mugs, all promoting the Second Amendment. And know that every dollar that you spend will go right back into the fight for our right to keep and bear arms. So you can support the Second Amendment and you can look good doing it. That's fpcgear.com. All right. Uh, this is a topic that you guys have probably heard a lot about or uh, lately, but this is, I have an interesting perspective that I want to, I want to, uh, we're going to be talking about here today, but uh, there's a student, uh, a graduate student uh, at Harvard who uh, is a, you know, Trump supporter, uh, who's conservative, who is a gun owner. Uh, and it turns out that her roommates at Harvard decided to search her room for one reason or another. And, uh, well, let's just put it this way. They decided to search her room to see if she had guns. And sure enough, she did. And now her landlord is asking her to move out. So uh, w in order to talk about that, well, we have a, a good friend, uh, a good friend of the show, uh, who's the, who was kind of the reporter who, who first wrote about this story. But before we do that, I wanted to show just a brief clip from an interview that was done on Fox and Friends so that you can really kind of get a feel for kind of how this, this whole story has, has been going. The story seems bizarre on its face. These are roommates. They're not friends of yours. You, you decided to room with them. You're at, you're at grad school. Right. Uh, what led them to search for a, a gun that you own legally? Right, so that's the big question that I have, and every time I want an answer, it's a different lie. But one comment that struck me was just, well, you're from the South, we saw you have this hat that we don't really care for. But I mean, I have been given so many lies about reasons they might have been in there that I just don't even know. Hmm. Right, so after your roommates raided your room when you weren't home on the basis of potentially your MAGA hat and knowing you were from Alabama, then you get an email from your landlord that asks you to move out during finals because it's making them, your, your lawful gun ownership is making them uncomfortable. Now, can you walk us through what happened next with the, is it the police department or the sheriff's department that came? Can you right. walk us through that? So I just invited Captain Donovan over just so that he could tell my landlord, everything is safe, everything is legal, there's no need to worry. And he did that, but despite all that, my landlord still said, despite the fact that this is legal and safe, um, it seems that people's feelings are hurt, so oh, the you feeling. should leave. Feeling, yeah, the feelings are hurt. Quick question, <laughs> I know that Massachusetts, or it's my understanding that Massachusetts does not have gun-free zones. However, in your lease with this company, did it state at, at anywhere in there that you were not allowed to have guns on the premises? Absolutely not. All right, so uh, with us now th uh, this morning, we have uh, the reporter for the uh, Washington Free Beacon, Mr. Stephen Gatowski. Steve, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing excellent, doing excellent. So first of all, tell me, how did you hear about this story? Uh, well, uh, I actually got this story through a tip. Um, <coughs> sorry. Uh, a friend of mine um, had seen uh, Layla or Leela posted on uh, Facebook about the trouble she was having with her landlord and her roommates um, and uh, asked if she would, if I'd be interested in writing about the story and and so Leela got in contact with me. She explained what was going on. She sent me, um, you know, email exchanges with her landlord and, and roommates that showed, you know, some evidence of what was happening. And, uh, you know, I, I reached out to the roommate who sent the, the original email complaining to the landlord and, and also to the landlord for their side of the story as well. Um, of course, they didn't get back to me. So, uh, 
you know, what we had to, what I had to go off of was her, um, her testimony, you know, what, what Leela thought about what was going on and, and also uh, the email exchanges, which gave some insight into, uh, you know, the back and forth um, and <clears throat> essentially explained how this all went down, which was essentially that the, you know, the roommates for whatever reason, and they gave a number of reasons. Um, although I think the, the stereotypical one, the, the MAGA hat uh, one is probably the most instructive. Um, but they went in and searched her room for got her guns um, and were very upset at the idea that she owned the guns. And even though the police came to her apartment and examined her firearms uh, and said that they were not in violation of any Massachusetts laws, uh, which is fairly impressive given what Massachusetts has on the books. Um, despite all that, uh, the landlord still essentially sided with the roommates who were uncomfortable with the firearms and, and asked her to leave. Well, you know, and the interesting thing about this whole thing is, is, you know, once again, no one disputes that they're legally owned. No one disputes that she's violated no law or that she's broken any agreement that she's made uh, with the, with, you know, in terms of in terms of her lease uh and yet for some reason nobody is talking about the fact that people who largely were they searched her room they literally went in and searched her room because they was afraid they were afraid she was exercising her constitutional right yeah that's right i mean the interesting thing to me about the whole dispute is uh <clears throat> you know after they searched the room and they found her guns, they had, they admitted that even in their email exchanges with the landlord, that they're not afraid of her. They're not afraid of Leela at all. Um, they don't. They know that she has firearms training, and they're not afraid of her harming them in any way. They're literally just afraid of the actual firearms. Uh, uh, one of them expressed a concern that the firearms might go off on their own, um, which is. Uh, anyone who owns firearms or has any firearms training knows it's not something that happens um except in the most extremely rare of situations dealing with you know mechanical malfunctions but uh and then also they're afraid of someone breaking in and using the guns against them which is also an extremely rare circumstance um and so you know i think that's really interesting because you know this woman uh leela she owns guns not just because she believes in uh, you know, the constitutional right to keep and bear arms, uh, although she does, but also because she uh, is a victim of or a survivor of domestic violence situation. Uh, when she was an undergrad uh, in, at the University of Alabama, she had a, a physically abusive boyfriend. And so she has firearms um, to protect herself as well for, you know, a very personal reason. And she's explained this to the roommates uh, from what she says. And apparently this th hasn't made any impact on them. They, they still don't want her to own firearms or live in their home or live, live with them in the apartment if she has them. So. Well, and I, I found it interesting. Like she said that some of the stuff that they came up with, some of the, the, the things that they wanted her to do, like store the firearm like in the basement with the ammunition separate. Now, if someone were to break into the house, if someone, and, and it, was a, it was maybe the old boyfriend or whatever it is, how exactly is she supposed to protect herself if her firearm, number one, is in a complete and utterly separate part of the house? And oh, by the way, the ammunition is somewhere else. I mean, the only way someone breaks into the house and steals the, and, and goes after the firearm is if they do what her roommates did and go ransacking, go ran, basically go ransacking her room, going through the closet in order to find the firearm. Yeah, and I mean, she's willing to... Um comply with Massachusetts law, which has a storage uh, provision in it. Uh, but the roommates actually wanted to go further than what Massachusetts law is and have her remove the firing pins from the firearms. So, you know, the situation that you're describing, if the firing pin is removed from the firearm and you're trying to get to it in an emergency situation, that's going to take, if you're, even if you're an expert um, with firearms at, at taking them down or, um, you know, uh, building them or, or uh, repairing them or, or replacing them, parts in them, 
if you remove the firearm from your fire from your handgun and someone breaks in and you have to uh, reinsert the fire firing pin it's going to take you a long time like uh, several minutes for an expert and much longer for a novice and so oh yeah i i've seen great. and i've seen some people suggest well you should have the firing pin one place the ammunition another and the firearm somewhere else and i'm like what then what good what good is the firearm yeah. uh, but you know even even additionally and then once again i'll just go back to the whole idea of searching the individual's room you know i wonder you know, for people who defend either her or defend the landlord, I wonder what other constitutional rights they're willing to say, yeah, if you exercise this right, then I have a right to search your room. I have, and, and, and by the way, I have a right to tell you, you need to move. I mean, what about religion? What if they had searched her room and found a, 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 a prayer rug and turns out she's she's muslim and they just didn't feel comfortable because you know because she's muslim um w would that be something that number one would be acceptable for them to search her room or or even better for the landlord to say yeah you're probably gonna have to leave if the other people move out yeah i think that's a very valid question i think you could come up with a number of different um scenarios where where roommates playing off of a stereotype like they did in this situation, uh, find something that's that uh, some that their roommate owns that's not le illegal, um, but they're bothered by uh, after after sort of a very inappropriate search of their room um, and ask them to move out. Uh, that a lot more people will be outraged by. You know, I think you could come up with a lot of uh, situations where that would cause a great deal of. Uh, uh, outcry. I mean, it certainly has in this case as well, but, um, you know, there's plenty of cases where you could come up with that I think even more people would be upset. Some of the people defending what the roommates did this time would be very much upset by the the situation you laid out uh, having to do with discrimination against, uh, you know, a Muslim individual or something. Well, I did a I did a little bit of a Google search because I wanted I wanted to learn a little bit more about uh, the Avid Property Management, the company that's that oversees us. And you know, evidently, uh, people have been leaving bad reviews on their Yelp. So, <laughs> so they're monitoring their Yelp page, and I couldn't find a I couldn't their website doesn't does doesn't appear to be up anymore. Um, but I anyway, I, I just found it interesting that it, there does seem to be a lot of response a lot of public response to the to the landlord uh in regards to this and so i'm, I'm actually i'm i'm happy to hear that uh but but along the same lines i mean is this one of the most i mean is this one of the 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 the, the more egregious examples of anti-gun bias that that you've seen or, or have you seen worse yeah i mean you know i, I think it's a pretty um, egregious example, and it certainly plays into a lot of stereotypes that people have um, about, you know, anti-gun people, uh, the way that they think about firearms. Um, you know, my my main motivation in writing the story um, and sort of bringing this to light was was that she this this woman uh, is under was under a very real threat of having to move out of her apartment over having done nothing wrong um, and right in the middle of her final season at Harvard, right? Which is a very, I would imagine a very stressful time um, and incur the cost of moving and all of that. Even if the landlord had waived, you know, whatever fees are involved with leaving your lease early, uh, which I guess he was, he was willing to do. Um, <clears throat> and so, you know, I, I mainly wrote it to try and bring light to what was going on to maybe, prevent it from happening, which seems to have worked. I mean, uh, she, as far as I'm aware now, she's still living there um, at the moment. I think she wants to move out eventually. She, her main concern was being forced out immediately and the, the sort of stress that that would, uh, you know, entail on top of what she was already going through as a graduate student at Harvard. Um, and so, you know, my thought was, if this, if you put shine some light on this, uh, perhaps the landlord would back off, which he seems to have done, um, from his, what I think were essentially threats to, you know, cause he, I've seen a lot of people defend 
the landlord, or at least some people have defended him as like, well, he's just trying to mediate this situation. You know, uh, it's a, it's a roommate dispute and he's just trying to come up with the simplest, uh, you know, answer for it, which is for the one roommate to move out instead of the three. Apparently there are three of the six were willing to move out, uh, you know, just to, to spite the, the gun owner. And, um, so one versus three, that's, you know, he just went with that. But if you read his emails to me, like he's, he's really kind of threatening uh, the gun owner because he's saying, well, if all these roommates move out, you're going to have mm-hmm. to pay, you know, $6,000 a month, which obviously I'm sure she probably can't afford. I and- would have, I would have focused on the fact that I'm sure you don't want to live with people who are going to go through your room. Sure, and, I, and she doesn't want to live with them. But, but it's <laughs> yeah, like, I, her, I would, I would make it clear. Look, I will make it easy for you if you should choose to move out. Yeah, I will make it easy for you because I wouldn't want to live with people who, you know. And sure. it's the worst part is, is that once again they they figured okay, so they she lives she's from Alabama and she wore a MAGA hat, and therefore they figure she has absolutely no right to privacy. Yeah, I mean, uh, it seems that way. They wouldn't talk to me, so I don't know what that. So if someone's from if someone's from Berkeley, uh, and they're from they're from California and they're from Berkeley, can I assume that they're a part of Antifa and therefore I can search their room because, well, I'm afraid they might be out there doing something uh, dangerous and destroying property. Yeah, similar line of thinking, I would imagine. Exactly, crazy. Anyway, uh, so real quick, tell tell everybody a little bit about uh, the Washington Free Beacon. Uh, you know what you guys are all what you guys are all about, and uh, how they can follow the work that you're doing there. Sure, uh, the Washington Free Beacon is a, a political me- news publication. Um, we're based in Washington D.C. Well, Northern Virginia. Uh, thankfully, I don't have to go into Washington D.C. every day anymore. <laughs> we used to be right behind the White House, but we're in Roslyn now. We're Politico and and a number of other uh, you know politically focused media outlets are based. Um, you know, we're a conservative editorial stance, but we mainly focus on um, reporting hard news like this story, uh, you know, bringing people uh, stories that are undercovered uh, by most of the rest of the media um, and focusing on, you know, hard news, which is a fairly unique thing in the conservative media, I would say. So that's, that's what we try to do. Um, and I personally focus mainly on uh, firearms policy and and uh you know stories so well you know thank you Stephen. you know I, I appreciate the work you do there's not a lot of outlets that actually f- once again focus on the issue of firearms uh but also uh or at least in a positive manner but also in fact uh make it a point to get all of the facts and the stories right a lot a lot of the news sites and, and with all due respect to them a lot of times what they're doing is they're regurgitating other stuff that yeah. they're seeing in the media. And so you don't really all oftentimes get like first line front news on, on, on our issue. Um, yeah. And that's I know what gun- we on, so I- yeah, I know guns.com is taking more of a, they're, they're, they're kind of doing a shift away from doing a lot of political stuff and most focusing mostly on fi- specific firearms related stuff. And so we're getting less political, less of this stuff from them. So, uh, you guys have proven to be a fantastic source of, of information and use you in particular. Thank you. Excellent. All right, everybody. Well, that is Stephen Katowski with the Washington Free Beacon. Stephen, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. All right, folks. Well, that's going to be it for today's Coffee with Craig. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, please take a moment, like and share this program. Share it with your friends. Tell them about the Firearms Policy Coalition. We are the home in the fight for civil rights. Got to use them or you're going to lose them. You guys take care. If you like our videos, follow, subscribe, like, and share.